it was uh, foretold to you that we had a gate crasher. Um, I invited uh, our next guest six months ago. And he said, I got an, we'll check if he's available. And then, not having heard back, I didn't think much about it. And then last night, um, his office contacted me and said, uh, what time should uh, he be there in the morning? And I was like, well, um, uh, or ladies and gentlemen, my good friend Mark Cuban. <laughs> It is so good to see you, and um, unexpected. <laughs> but okay, now we know. <laughs> it's fantastic. How are you? I'm great. Um, how's Shark Tank? Great. I mean, I'm done with it, so it's perfect. <laughs> how is, I wanted you to say that I was dying to hear that that way. You know, Kevin's going to buy Well, forget it. Anyway, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just I'm letting it go. Um, so uh, the drug company? Costplusdrugs.com is crushing it. I mean... We're forcing the big PBMs to change how they do business. If any of you here are involved with your um, human resources at all and your benefits programs, compare our prices um, at costplusdrugs.com. We'll give you a price list. For the first time, you actually can look up the cost of a drug and see what it is. We'll show you our cost. So I'll give you an example. There's a lot of men here of a certain age. So let's just say you use generic Cialis. Um, and so you go to costplusdrugs.com. You, put you want to get the mic closer when you're saying oh, this now. For yeah. sure. Yeah. You go to costplusdrugs.com, <laughs> and you put in Tadilafil, and when it comes up, it shows you our cost. Then we only mark it up 15%, and then we have a pharmacist that has to review it. That's $5, and $5 for shipping, or now you can pick it up at a local pharmacy. And when it's all said and done, you can get 90 Tadilafil generic Cialis for less than the cost of a bag of M&Ms, like $14. I mean, what's going to do more to change the birth rate in this country? Than, um, I see a lot of guys picking up the phone. Thank you. I see a lot of women sending messages to their husbands or partners. Thank you. Um, but the point being that finally there's price transparency for um, medications. And that's led to significant changes. And soon we'll be going into the healthcare space as well, as well. But for those of you who are involved in your plans at your companies, whether you're large or small, I really strongly encourage you to do some price shopping and price comparison because we will be less expensive than what you're paying right now. And for those of you who have deductibles, co-pays, co-insurance, you know, compare our pricing to what you're paying. We'll save you money. So it's going great. No, I'm glad to hear it. Now, I know you, you read my daily email on occasion. Of course because I do. Every yeah. once in a while, I get a, a, either a one-line note calling me out on something or, mm -hmm. or a, a five-paragraph essay <laughs> telling me where, I, where I'm, I'm not going right. One of the things that I love about our communication is that your insights, um, A, are brilliant and B, very different from my own. So I would love to personally hear, and the question I want to uh, kind of shift gears and ask about is, uh, I think everybody in this room knows my vision of the future with respect to AI and my my and also the questions I have about it. To be fair, because I don't have a clear path forward, but I'd I'd love you to talk for a second about how you see um, the sociological and behavioral changes, like the Mark Cuban take on what some of this means near term. Because I know we can't go long term. There's no way to think out past right. 25. But what where are you with that? So um, it's an interesting question. So there's two types of companies, those who are great at AI and everybody else. And those who are great at AI are going to win. And you know, you heard Anjali and what she's doing. You've heard other companies, um, Michael and Jeffrey and what they're doing. It, it's, it's great. Um, but now the bigger question is, you know, I think what everybody's doing right now, from what I heard this morning when I was here and elsewhere, is you're trying to find, use AI to recreate what's already being done. Yes. You know, I think that's, that's a normal transition, but the question I'm trying to ask myself and as I explore all this is AI as entrepreneur. How can AI reinvent processes as opposed to just reconfigure or simplify processes? Can, you know, if I just keep on shoving things into a large language model and, and think as an entrepreneur and start asking questions, what's the optimal way to serve a customer as opposed to this is what we do, you know, write the software, you know, or um, recreate a, a process. I think that'll work for a while, but, you know, if you think about the underpinnings of AI, there's this death war to be the foundational large language model, right? right? And I think that's why you see this progression down to Mar-a-Lago. 
and all the people giving a million dollars and all the people showing up down there are the ones that are in this war to it's be the, the founder. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. because one stroke with a pen and, you know, all of a sudden you're out of that battle. Right. And so I think, but with that said, large language models are going to continue to progress and evolve and become more powerful. And so rather than just asking them to do what we already do, just save me body count um, or save me some time, I think you're going to have young entrepreneurs in particular just saying, you know, I have this vision. What's your vision? You know, and just literally have a conversation like you would talk to a mentor, you know, and just see where it takes you. And I think we'll see some stunningly different businesses as a result. Oh, I'm a sure thing. there's. I'm sure the first nine-year-old self-made billionaire is is coming from AI. Trillionaire, yeah. Possibly trillionaire, yeah. but certainly billionaire. It's it's interesting though when you talk about the hyperscalers all going down to Mar-a-Lago when they all everybody is trying to figure it out. What I find fascinating is the the juxtaposition between those who really understand what it's like the data elite and everybody else. Like right. for years we've been dealing with, there's, they're playing a different game on the West Coast with data than almost everybody else, even the businesses that right, say they have so much, yeah. Just different level, yeah. right? That bifurcation is getting greater and greater and the dollars are getting greater and greater. And so the, the reason I asked the question, uh, and it was, it's, it's more for self-education. Like if you are not, and most of us aren't, a hyperscaler, mm -hmm. if you're not a data elite, you're in a world where you're going to have to find a level. Not necessarily, right? Because, you know, all this data you're aggregating to be a hyperscaler, that's reflective of the past. You know, it's not necessarily reflective of what, sh what should be done or what comes next. Like even Linda, when she was talking about community notes, that's people confirming and, you know, entering what they think. Right. Whereas... Yeah, I, I think where AI is going to go, if you think it can think at all, it'll come up with things and you don't want it. You know, there's when you talk to young entrepreneurs and even our own experiences, sometimes the fact that you don't know shit is an advantage. Always. You know, These because know there's nothing to hold you back right. and you're yeah. not afraid. Right. And I think AI has some of the same principles where you can be bound to the data that you already have, which is great for Tubi, right? Because you're trying to come up with a new way to attract people and retain people. And it's, you know, that's how the algorithms but, um, are working in social media. But sometimes you want it to be a clean approach when you're, you're trying to come up with better ways to do business. And you just having, you know, we all train our own. I'm, I'm a big believer that there's going to be mil millions of models. Right, you'll start with the basic five, but Shelly will have a model, Mark will have a model, my 15-year-old will have a model, everybody will have their own I, model. I think and that's we'll, clear. And we'll have our own conversations with them. Yeah. And we'll find our own directions to go and our own vision And for entrepreneurs. That's a wide open door. And so while it's great when you're selling, you know, when Instagram is selling something, right? Like my brother started taking singing lessons and all, and I was looking at some of his stuff and all of a sudden I got an ad from Instagram for this thing to help you sing and I bought it for him because his birthday's next week. I'm like, yeah, it's weird, it's like scary, but that's the functionality that it's kind of geared towards right now. That's not necessarily a functionality that an entrepreneur or somebody who's trying to, you know, disrupt an industry would, would necessarily take. I, I couldn't agree more. Mark, what, what, what do you want this wor room to know uh, in the couple minutes we have left? What, uh, what's on your mind? What's keeping you occupied? What's keeping you up at um, night? I'm an investor in Blue Sky. Where's Linda at? Sorry. Um, and I think we're going to make a we're good. I'm M Cuban on Blue Sky. And I think as social media and information consumers, we'll make decisions whether we and we, our fam well, what we want for our families in terms of moderated versus unmoderated. I think when you saw um, what Mark Zuckerberg did um, yesterday, the day before, whenever he came out with his video, you know, saying that, you know, we're going to work with the administration, you know, to, to open up free speech around the world. That's his way of, of trying to tell Donald Trump to use tariffs to get rid of all the limitations in, in Europe, et cetera. And it's also his way of saying, you know, the shit's going to hit the fan, but we need more different types of data to feed our algorithms, right? Because when you content moderate, you're not getting the full range, you know? Um, and so I'm a believer that content moderation is hard, but good. Right. Linda obviously is on, on the other page. I think, you know, we don't have standards in terms of age and what appears. So, you know, Pornhub is closed in 16 cities. You don't have to go to Pornhub. You can go to X. <laughs> and you can be 13 years old. 
I mean, you, you know, when I was a kid, we put the National Geographic underneath the bed <laughs> to look at the pictures. Now you just go to, you know, different social this media. This is a family-rated show, Mark. Yeah, right? But tell me I'm wrong. No, you're not wrong. You're not you know, wrong. and so that's going to be a very specific decision. You know, the, the anti-Semitism I see on X, on every single post, if the analogous happens on Facebook with all the grandmothers, you know, that are out there, whether it's anti-Semitism or other hate, if, it, if you truly want free speech, is that what we truly want? And so we as a nation and a, a world will make that decision. And the good news is Facebook Meta is a public company. So a year from now, we'll know whether it was the right decision or not. We'll see their numbers and they'll have to talk about them. And so I think it's a really in interesting time right now. That's why I'm supporting Blue Sky because there is content moderation and it, you know it's extensible. So if you want to do your own server, but most people aren't going to do that, but it's just nice. Now, to, to Linda's credit and Elon's credit, you know, X is a work of engineering marvel. It really, really is adding Grok and all that stuff. It really is it's the best platform technologically. Unfortunately, the guy who runs it is the world's biggest troll. <laughs> you know, and you can't, you know, community notes, you know, I don't know if Linda's still here. Community notes is great, but you only see them if you're a community noter unless it reaches a threshold that, that Elon sets. And so, you know, it's all these decisions we all make as consumers right now. And that, you know, Elon and Zuck are making as entrepreneurs and CEOs will be, there's going to be a lot of things that come to the forefront as to what works and what doesn't. And we'll see what happens from there. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Cuban. Thank you, Thank you so very much.